I'm Maria Vilaris. Recently, there has been a announcement from Microsoft that they have a quantum chip Majorana 1, and it's been getting lots of attention in the media and in the quantum community. So I wanted to do a reaction video for the perspective of a quantum physicist on this announcement. There was a similar announcement from Google a few months ago of a quantum chip willow, which I did a reaction video on. You'll see in this video some similarities and differences between these chips and the nature of these results. So what I'm going to do is take a look at some of the material that Microsoft have put out about this chip. They've collected various links here. So if we read the story, they've announced the world's first quantum chip powered by a topological core that it expects will realize quantum computers in years, not decades. For some background, Microsoft have been taking an approach to quantum computing that is very different from others known as topological quantum computing. They made a bet on this quite a long time ago, I think 20 years maybe, and they've been doing research on this particular area of topological quantum computing since then. It's an approach based on new kind of physics that has been predicted but hasn't been engineered or found experimentally yet. The motivation is that if you build the building blocks of quantum computers qubits using this topological approach, these qubits can be much more resilient to noise, so to errors, than the qubits that we can build using other methods. So different approaches to building qubits include using superconductors, trapped ions, neutral atoms, spins of electrons, photons, and more. But this topological quantum computing approach is like a completely different idea to create these qubits that are intrinsically protected from errors based on this kind of new type of physics. And so there's a strong motivation to want to build a quantum computer from these types of qubits that are topological and intrinsically protected against errors, because then if you want to build an accurate quantum computer that doesn't have errors, then it should be much easier than using other methods. And in the long run, what you want to do is a process called quantum error correction, spreading out your information that's stored in a qubit across lots of physical qubits and using those extra qubits to make your quantum computer resilient to noise. The previous reaction video I made to Google's Willow chip focused on this quantum error correction area because what they've done is using a particular approach to quantum error correction where you encode this information across lots of qubits using the it's called the surface code is a particular way of encoding that information of spreading it out across lots of qubits. What they showed was that they could use lots of physical qubits to implement this quantum error correction in such a way that they have one logical qubit. So you're working with one qubit of quantum information, but it's protected because it's within this error correcting code. The kind of main novelty of that recent development was in showing that this quantum error correction process can work. So comparing that to say topological quantum computing, the difference is that with these topological qubits that Microsoft are focusing on, the idea is that the intrinsic errors of these qubits are far lower than in other platforms because they're protected by this new kind of physics. So you need to do much less work to protect them from errors instead of needing loads of physical qubits to encode your quantum information you should be able to do that with fewer resources that should make it easier to scale and realize quantum computing sooner now you might be wondering why isn't topological quantum computing more widespread the reason is that 
because this type of matter needed for these protected qubits hasn't been implemented, hasn't been tested. It's a high risk approach because no one's actually built the qubit before, unlike other modalities where we have a good, robust and tested knowledge of how the qubits are actually physically built. Microsoft took this kind of high risk, high reward approach to look at topical quantum computing. And so when they made this announcement that they have a chip that actually realizes topological quantum computing, this made a big impression in the community because if it really works, then that is really cool and a big breakthrough coming from that bet that they took on this kind of more untested approach to quantum computing. So let's see what they actually say about it. A lot of this blog is about quantum computing in general and the way it can be used. They mentioned the idea that it's reliable by design, incorporating error resistance at the hardware level. So that's referring to the idea of using this exotic physics to protect these qubits intrinsically from errors. It was indeed a high risk, high reward challenge that they committed two years ago. The company placed eight topological qubits on a chip designed to scale to one million. So they're saying that they've put eight of these qubits on this chip. And these exotic particles, which are known as Majoranas, that's why they called it the Majorana chip, have not been seen or made. They don't exist naturally in nature. We have to engineer them into existence. And so here we're on to the interesting part about what they're actually claiming. So what they say is that until recently, these haven't been seen or made. And they say that the Nature paper, so this is a paper that Microsoft released alongside this announcement of the chip, is a paper that was published in the journal Nature. It marks peer-reviewed confirmation that Microsoft has not only been able to create Majorana particles, which help protect quantum information from random disturbance, but can also reliably measure that information from them using microwaves. This section has caused a lot of suspicion in the quantum community. And it doesn't really match up with what is said in the paper and also what's said in the reviewer reports for the paper. So does this paper really confirm that they've been able to create Majorana particles? We can also have a look at this Azure quantum blog, see if it says anything different. And we do have something slightly different here where they've said research published today in nature along with data shared at the station Q meeting demonstrate the ability to harness this new type of material and engineer a different type of qubit. So this combination is going to be interesting as we look further into this. Okay, let's look at the paper. So there's this fundamental operation needed for this topological quantum computing to work and they do these experiments to show some outcomes of some measurements. It says these measurements do not by themselves determine whether the low energy states detected by interferometry are topological. So what this is saying is that their results don't conclusively show they have a topological qubit. It's consistent with it, but there's other explanations for it as well using conventional physics. The findings represent progress towards realization of a topological qubit based on measurement only operations, but they're not actually showing that they have a topological qubit. They've shown something that's important for topological quantum computing, but not something that shows that they have achieved topological quantum computing. And we can get more insight by having a look at the peer review reports. So it's quite cool that we have a actual file with the peer review reports. So this is the scientists that were sent the paper for comments to decide whether to accept it to the journal or not. And there's a comment at the beginning from 
the editors. The editorial team wants to point out the results of this manuscript do not represent evidence for the presence of Majorana zero modes in the reported devices. The editors and reviewers emphasize that this paper doesn't show evidence of these topological qubits. That's what these Majorana zero modes are. So it shows results that are consistent with being explained by these Majorana zero modes, but it's not the only way to explain them. So what have Microsoft actually shown then? In the blog, they're claiming they have got eight topological qubits. They haven't demonstrated these qubits from that paper. But in this blog, they have said that the topological qubit is validated by this research published in Nature, along with data shared at the Station Q meeting. It seems that the claim of having actually demonstrated the qubit is in this bit, the data shared at the Station Q meeting, not in the peer-reviewed paper, unlike what it says in that block, the other one. Okay, so I don't know much about this meeting, but the impression I have from what I've seen about it is that they shared data showing they have a topological qubit. If this was a different field or a different context, then maybe that sharing it itself would be cause for kind of big excitement about this result having been demonstrated. But let me give context on demonstrations of topological quantum computing from the past. A few years ago, there were a few different nature papers published about topological quantum computing claiming to have experimental evidence of these topological qubits. But later it turned out that these papers weren't satisfactory evidence of topological qubits and they got retracted. So given that history, that makes the community kind of suspicious of results announcing the demonstration of topological qubits without a thorough peer review process. Now the part that has been peer reviewed is this paper which says that it's not demonstrated Majorana zero modes. And this data shared at the meeting has not yet been published and put under the process of peer review. So I think that for the community to be convinced that this exotic type of qubit really has been created, we'll probably have to wait till this data gets actually published and peer reviewed and put under some scrutiny to understand whether it really is evidence of a topological qubit or if other explanations for the experimental results need to be taken seriously alongside the proposed explanation that it's an actual topological qubit. It would be really great if this actually all checks out and there is a, they have actually created a topological qubit on this chip, but there's some reason to be skeptical until we have the full peer-reviewed data given the history with topological qubits. Okay, but let's say that it actually, it all checks out and it really works and it's actually a topological qubit that's been created on this chip. What does that mean for the field of quantum computing? It would be really exciting having this new type of qubit and to have this kind of completely different type of underlying physics where it's intrinsically resilient to noise, which could lead to needing far fewer resources to do the error correction needed to get accurate computations. The challenge would then be to scale that up. So if they've demonstrated that you can control one of these topological qubits, then there's the task of showing that you can do operations on multiple versions of these qubits and scale that up to more and more of these and control a lot of these topological qubits. And in that scenario, they're kind of at this stage that a lot of the other qubit hardware systems were a while ago when they were first being developed with one qubit 
trying to do an operation on one, adding in a second one, trying to do an operation on the second. So there's some catching up of this approach, but if the resilience to noise that's promised by this new kind of physics holds up in these devices, then that'll be a really exciting pathway to scale. And I think everyone in the quantum and physics community wants it to be true. Having topological qubits would be really cool to build quantum computers based on great physics and properties of, of these qubits. Hopefully this bet that Microsoft have taken on this exotic type of quantum computing pays off. To recap, Microsoft have announced this chip using my Majorana qubits, an approach to topological quantum computing where the qubits should be extra resilient to noise, which should make it much easier to scale to more qubits with low noise sooner. The actual paper they put out to validate this does not show evidence of these topological qubits. It shows something consistent with them and it's something that would be needed to control these qubits, but it's not demonstrating that these qubits exist because it can also be shown using conventional physics. And they have mentioned that they shared data in this meeting, but until those results are peer reviewed and put under scrutiny, it's hard to be convinced by them, especially given the history of Majorana qubits where there have been experimental demonstrations of them claimed in the past that have been later retracted. So we have to be very careful in considering what other explanations there are for the outcomes of these experiments. But it's a very exciting area. It's cool that there could be some really great progress here. And I look forward to keeping up with what's happening and hopefully updating you when I have a better idea of what's happening in the world of topological quantum computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. If you want to know more about quantum computing, I recently put out a mini series on my channel about what it is and the general landscape. Let me know in the comments what you think.